Eric Gunnels joins us now on Rebel HQ. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome, John. Or thank you, John. Long, long time listening to the show. Oh, that's awesome, and thank you for joining us. So you are running in Michigan, the State House, the 48th District. You're currently serving your second term as a Thetford Township Board Trustee. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't know many Michigan districts, so I don't know yours, unfortunately. Could you introduce us to the 48th? Yes, the 48th district is basically uh, the north end of Genesee County, which is uh, Genesee County is the county uh, of most noted for Flint City. Uh, Flint City is the central major city uh, of Genesee County. So it's located pretty much in the center of uh, lower mitten of Michigan. So I want to talk to you about your your opponents that you're going up against, um, but also the some of the history of your district because uh, I've read that gerrymandering, which is obviously a problem in many parts of the country, is a particularly big issue in in your area. Um, that your district itself has been gerrymandered. There don't tend to be a lot of competitive races, unfortunately, which is obviously the worst possible outcome. Um, so what is your outreach plan? How are you going to be getting people engaged? to possibly overcome some of these suppressive sort of structural issues? Well, uh, first of all, in the 48th district, we're doing a lot of um, uh, campaigning, any opportunity that we have, uh, public events, we're reaching out to those people. Uh, also, uh, signage, we're trying to get good signage, as you can see behind me, uh, getting the signs out is important. Also, knocking on doors is very important, and just overall having the right platform. And uh, so, as you're going about the knocking on doors, I mean, how how has the reception been? Are are people particularly engaged in this election? Are they they engage in state level politics as well? And, and when they talk to you, what are the sorts of issues that they're bringing up? I, I don't see people are not quite engaged uh, in politics uh, like we would hope. I, I mean, uh, I think people are really exhausted by it. Um, frankly, bored with it. Uh, but hmm. we're trying to get people encouraged about it, and I think I think when people see my face, they see a newer, younger face on the on the rise. And when I tell them, hey, "Look, I I put freedom first. I'm not one of these candidates that's going to go down and 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 not uh, represent the people. I'm not here to go down and make decisions for people in Lansing. I'm here to represent people in Lansing." So uh, I, I I love that you're saying that. So I, I was looking over your 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 platform, your list of issues, and I'm going to be honest. I look at a lot of platforms. And they tend to tick the same sorts of boxes, but honestly, yours has a lot of ideas that I don't tend to see talked about. And I, and I want to go over a few of those. So one of them that you talked about is uh, apparently there's a lot of uh, factories that are going unused in Michigan from industries that used to be there that you would like to turn into manufacturing centers for solar and wind. Absolutely, I think uh, I think renewable energy is the way of the future. We need to focus all of our attention on. Renewable energies, I'm a very environmentally friendly candidate. Uh, I care very much about the environment. Fossil fuels are outdated, they're obsolete, they need to go to the wayside. Uh, we haven't even uh, begun to discuss you know, wind, tidal, wave power, and then there's geothermal uh, power. We need, to, we need to look at all these mediums as uh, potentials for not only uh, transitioning to, to renewable energies, but also for uh, Michigan to have this as an industry, potential industry for economic viability. And you know, I have to say, especially since it looks like, at least at the presidential level, we're not going to have a lot of leadership on those sorts of renewable energies for at least a few years. I'm glad that there are politicians at the state and local level who are working on that. Um, so you you also say in your bio that you're a caregiver. One of the issues that that, that you cite that you're particularly interested in is uh, is patients' rights. Um, what what do you include in that area? And and is that something that that theoretically can get people engaged? It's not something that I generally hear politicians talking that much about. Well, it's uh, it certainly has to do a lot with the uh, Michigan is one of the few states, if not the only state, where a uh, legalization is going to the ballot this fall, this November. The citizens of Michigan will vote to legalize marijuana, like alcohol, mm -hmm. and with that, uh, all three Democratic candidates of the governor's race uh, have uh, have been outspoken in favor of cannabis legalization. Uh, the Attorney General uh, Dana Nessel has been outspoken uh, in in favor of it. I support her as well. Uh, I put a medical marijuana on my running platform in 2012. A lot of people told me that that was political suicide, but I mm. didn't think so. Uh, I put medical marijuana on the top of my running platform, knowing that my community would elect me, uh, being brave enough to put that uh, controversial issue on my running platform. And I was right. I was overwhelmingly elected and overwhelmingly reelected. In 2016, 
Uh, can you just clarify one thing? Did you say that that uh, legalization vote is gonna happen uh, in the election at the end of this year? Yes, this November, uh, uh, November 6th, I believe, is the uh, general election date for Michigan. And yes, Michigan will likely uh, pass the legalization of, mar of marijuana for adult use, 21 years and older, uh, to regulate it like alcohol. And I, su I support that all the way. I support uh, criminal justice system reform is a big um, issue, a platform of mine. I, I do think that we need major reform in the criminal justice system. Uh, with the, the last 10 years of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, we've seen law enforcement abuse the Michigan medical marijuana community. Uh, and the forfeiture laws have been, I have wrecked a lot of people and families, uh, mine included. Um, so you know, my personal stuff was taken from me for three years. I had to fight to get it back, even though I was never charged with a crime. Uh, and it, but I still fought and in, 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 I've been fighting the fight ever since then. And uh, we just need reform on all levels of criminal justice. Uh, no one, no adult needs to go to a jail over a, of a plant that's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I put medical marijuana on my running platform as a candidate long before it was ever cool. Yeah, and that was a wise choice because more perhaps than any other issue, public views on that and views of elected officials have been changing very quickly. So you mentioned the the property issue that you had. I see that you had posted on your on your Facebook, which is serving as your campaign website right now, that it had been a multi-year battle to get your property given back to you because of government corruption. Could could you fill us in on what happened there? Yes, I had I in 2014. Uh, I had a, I purchased a building in my my township. It was both a residence and a commercial piece of property. It was zoned as both. And after purchasing this property, it needed a lot of fixing up, but it came with a certificate of occupancy. And when I purchased it, the local officials, they, I, it was right after the first year I won my election uh, in 2012. So I think there was some internal um, political retribution, if you will. Uh, served on me, and they used the, the building inspector, the, the building inspector, five police officers, and the international building code, which I had to wow. sue the township uh, all the way to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, huh. uh, in which I did lose. But the testimony that I gained from that lawsuit was invaluable. The uh, the the testimony of the officers and the building inspector clearly lied to a judge to acquire an illegal warrant. Basically, the story, how the story is, you know, they they told the judge that they saw two two by fours and a single sheet of plywood uh, in my possession. Therefore, I might commit a crime with it. And then, of course, they <laughs> riddled the entire what? warrant with marijuana. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they, they I have two I by fours out back of my property right now. Should I be worried? <laughs> with today's international building code and the aggressive tactics used. Uh, because I believe that the International Building Code uh, is the, under the right of entry clause is being used to, to subvert the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. And that is something that I care very much about. Uh, it will be one of my major platforms to address that and uh, to hold uh, you know, uh, law, enforcement account law, law enforcement accountability and transparency is one of, those th one of the major issues that I champion. Well, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we only have another minute, and I want to make sure that people know where they can get more information. Uh, so, I want to plug your website is uh, www.electgunnels.com. Uh, similarly, slash donate uh, if you'd like to, to donate to Eric, and uh, you can volunteer at that main website uh, as well. And uh, so, I want to thank you for for coming on the show today and, and talking about your platform. I learned a lot. Thank you for having me on TWT, and thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, by the way, you probably saw in the background there, August 7th is his primary. If you live in Michigan, you can get involved then.